hello 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 i'm making a healing video today with this rock here with this healing rock for all people out there in the world that are currently suicidal i know what it means to be suicidal i have been suicidal so many times in my life that i cannot count it anymore it's almost my entire life i have been suicidal off and on, like constantly going on, constantly. It started at age 13 and went throughout my entire life. And with two suicide attempts, and it was horrific. And I can talk a little bit about this today. And I want to give you healing energy with this rock. This is an ocean rock, ocean art. This is artwork from Mother Earth for us with healing energy. And it's an amazing shape, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Has like a smiley face in it. <laughs> Hello, hello, smiley face. <laughs> yes, I have been suicidal many times, many times that made me watch horror movies. Yes, 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 yes. But I came with good intentions. Yes, I came with good intentions. Been through so many years, like millions of years, tumbling through the ocean. And now this smiley face came about, and it means only love and healing and kindness. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's all it means. So, and a smiley face is supposed to be a smiley face. It's not supposed to be turned into something horrible. And that's what people do in the world. They do this. They turn things into horror about anything. They make fun of anything and turn things into into a grimace and into a into a joke, into a sarcastic, mean, hateful joke. And there's so much hate, so much so much bunched up hate and all of this sarcastic hate in the world. That all comes from tremendous pain, emotional pain that is bunched up. And we have different brains. People cope with the pain in very different ways, you know. So many different ways. But I'm just going to organize these people into roughly two groups. Just to make this more understandable. Just there's many more groups, but just to make it more schematic, the one group acts their pain out on others, and the other group withdraws and acts it out on themselves, become depressed or suicidal. So those are broadly the two different groups. And so the, the group that acts out on others, they contribute to making the world worse for themselves and for others and for all life. So I want to make this very under, understood here. I hope that I hope you understand. I hope anyone, the haters too, understands what I'm trying to say that if you act it out and lash it out and if you sit on your anger and it bunches up more and more and more because you don't go into yourself you only go outside into the struggle into the strife into the competition into the bashing into the gang banging and so on. that just makes your hate worse a lot of people don't seem to understand that. It, 
it feels it just feels temporarily like an like a relief and then if people back away from you it is becomes like a validation for that what you're doing it becomes reinforced so anyone who gives in to a hater and let the hater win an argument or or let you let him make you feel bad or you know whatever get this impression that oh he won with this then you reinforce then we reinforce his act out and they will never understand what's happening actually they'll keep on just letting their anger out and it's they're not going anywhere with it it's just not being resolved you know the problems are not being resolved it just becomes worse and the hater doesn't know why he starts feeling worse you know instead of better you know temporary relief for a few seconds and then it gets worse and then he'll have to find another way of lashing it out and and that escalates sometimes into really really heavily convoluted sarcastic hatred and and sarcastic ideas and horror competitions and stuff like this so it just escalates in the wrong direction i hope that makes sense what i'm saying so and for the people that go that are withdrawn that are getting going into depression and that are becoming suicidal the rate of suicidalness is going way up every year it's going up higher and i see this also was on the news there's always something on the news about this that the suicide rate is going up and the actual suicides are becoming much more frequent in the world particularly in the united states also lots of drug use lots of narcotics use this is all the narcotics use that all is in this when i group them in these two categories in the category of self-destruction of depression and suicide so that's all that that belongs into that group and they're just trying to medicate themselves they're just trying to desperately feel a little bit better feel just a little bit more relief you know they they're under tremendous tension the the tension is they've never received love and then they continue on that path with this also with this idea with the the, the idea that has been funneled into them the idea of there is no love it's also just an idea but it has been given to them because because they didn't get the love so during childhood and this is real critical for people to understand this if you don't give your children love they're going to end up on drugs they're going to end up committing suicide or even committing homicide or bullying and and hurting others so it doesn't make the world better okay it makes the world more painful and more it causes more suffering in the world so that's why i say to people don't put children into this world you are not ready for it for being parents most people are not okay there's maybe 10 people that are maybe maybe 100 people in the world that are that are ready to to be good parents and someone told me i would have been a good mother okay so i don't want to put i don't want to impose existence on another living being you know why should i do this when i when i know how bad it can get how bad the suffering it can get so don't do it don't put more living beings into this world use birth control and if necessary use abortion early abortion but yeah you have the right to do whatever you want with your body don't put another living being into this world don't do it so
So I I want to give love. I want to give infinite love from the infinite cosmos to all people that are suffering, that are suicidal, that are feeling despair. I want to give you healing energy, infinite healing for the mind. And I know what it I know what it's like. I've been through all of this. I've been through all of those developmental stages in my life with all of the suffering, with all of this teenage anxiety and feeling inadequately looking or bad looking or being bullied and then taking that what the bullies say as as real, you know, when they they're telling me I am I am ugly and fat and I and then I feel I they're making me feel ashamed about this and then I feel like I can never be perfect or something, you know. And when I was 13, I didn't even want to. I was already terrified of this. I didn't want to get into this. I didn't want to get into this mind state and into this peer pressure and competition. So I wanted to be a chubby baby. I wanted to stay in some kind of cocoon of childhood so then it then I got older then at 16 you know I started to need boyfriends and and I would always go for those I would always want those that are not really into me that are kind of like almost autistic that are kind of like cold a little bit so I would be struggling with them and why would I do this it's very simple Dr. Arthur Janoff talked about it it's called repetition compulsion we repeat what happened to us as children with our parents with particularly the mothers when the mothers were not giving us love this becomes perpetuated tension and we acted out later on okay we acted out during our teenage years we acted out as adults and went on for a very 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 long time that's why I also when when I met Paul we were just friends for a long time and I could see that he wanted to have sexual contact to me and I felt kind of it felt kind of you know it felt kind of nice it felt touching it felt like an affirmation and all of this and I wanted to give back to him because I loved him so we got involved I told him in the beginning that I that I am I I was into black guys and still still like the mulattoes you know and still like the the chocolate ones, um. So I I like Neil deGrasse Tyson and so I told Paul I told him this is who I like and this is my my preference and if we cuddle then you have to know that. You know, it is not, I'm not going to be like totally just for you. It's going to be an open relationship for my part at least. And I made that very clear to him. But he clung to me anyway. And I, th I thought that he needed me and needed my love. So it kind of, it went against me loving him and getting into a more serious relationship with him was going against this repetition compulsion, you know, from with my mother this, you know, I always want to get the, the guys that really don't like me that much, that don't love me, that don't care about me. You know. And 
been date raped twice by black men and treated horribly bad by black men and one Iranian man and this is just some facts you know I'm not bashing anyone I'm just giving some reality here that's all you know so um, I also had a black girlfriend who uh, who treated me absolutely cruelly she was absolutely cruel psychologically to me so I had to uh, at, at some point break break off the friendship and um, I don't want to be hurt anymore so yeah. so I'm, I'm gonna be very careful who I engage with and this is my right to do you know, I'm gonna be very very careful still have my sexual preferences and I like Mulatto men, I like Vin Diesel, I think Vin Diesel and Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think those are very sweet people. Those are very great protectors and kind and intelligent and generous and I love those people. They're, they're, they radiate out an aura of infinity and vastness and I like that very much. So. There's, I know there's a lot of great people in the world. There's a lot of great people of all from all walks of life. Okay, so I'm just saying I had these particular experiences with those particular people, and it left me just a bit more on the cautious side, you know, in general with anyone, you know. So I'm just I've just become more cautious. I'm not going to engage. I'm I'm not gonna engage with a Muslim, for example, anymore. You know, people could call that racist if they want to. You know, there are Muslims that are white, too. So, and there are some Asian Muslims. So, I'm not gonna engage with someone who's a Muslim. You know, that's for sure. So, and I'm gonna be very cautious. And I don't. I'm not going to engage with anyone, whatever color they are, you know, white, Asian, black. I, I don't, why should I? Why should I meet anyone, you know, seriously, you know. And that's, I say this because I want to tell the world to be cautious about this too. You know? So if you find someone you can really trust, stick with that person. Even if that person is not your sexual preference, stick with the person who you, whom you can trust. This is the most important thing, you know. Your safety comes before any of the the play and the the pleasure. So that's very important, you know. Your safety, your body, comes before any of these pleasure things and. Uh, and the social things and the, and the associations with people and group dynamics and what what whatever it's going is going on. So safety first, you know, your animal safety first, your safety and all of your proteges, you know, your animals, your children, and your own body. But the animals come first. They're the most innocent of all. Protect those first. I see so many people on the internet that are in abusive relationships. They and they stay in those and they don't stay. It's not not because not so much because of vanity, not so much because of what other people will accuse them of, like they accuse them of whore, they accuse them of stupid, they accuse them of uh, be wanting validation. It's much, it's much more complex than that, much more complex. It comes from childhood. Okay. It's much more complex than just seeking the pleasure you know, no, 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 no. That's not what it is. And there, there are women that 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 say outwardly that they like to 
be in an abusive relationship. Some of them are seeking this. They think this is normal because there are so many of them that are like this. They, they like to be spanked. But that is not turning them on in actuality. They think it is. They think it because it's an act out. It's an act out from childhood. It's called repetition, compulsion. Okay. And they equate this with something fun or as an idea, but it really isn't in the body. Okay. The body of a woman can only get turned on. And Tio Swan talked about this very important video that she made, and it pisses so many people off because it's the truth. Our bodies can only get turned on and even get into that range, into that zone of sexual pleasure. <laughs> That's like a real long stretch to even get into that zone. With today's stress that we have, most people are far away from that zone. Okay, Far away. I see it on the internet. I see it everywhere. I go shopping, I see the facial expressions of people. Most women are in terror. They are, te they are in terror because of what's going on in the world. You know, the Muslim men beating, killing women, raping women. Women are in terror. They don't want, they don't want to be, their, their bodies don't want to be hurt. Even those kinky ladies that think they want to be spanked. Their bodies don't want to be spanked. Okay? It's just this idea that's the ego again. It's some kind of idea attachment. It's a self-image attachment. It's like they, they consider themselves, they find it somehow, they equate that as sexy or something. And it's, it isn't, there's nothing sexy about it. Okay, So to get into that range of pleasure, my God, we have to first get into the range of total relaxation. Okay, this is the truth. I'm giving you the truth. How can I relax with a Muslim man who says to me that women are, are, women are, what did this one guy said, say to me just the other day? It made me want to puke on Facebook. He said, women are our, our possessions. They are worth. Oh, he said, we are the lords of the women. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know what to, where to get started with that, you know. It's like, wow, people, man, wake up and question these things. Wow. Question this, oh my gosh. Anyone out there, Christians, agnostics, and particularly the Muslim women, my gosh, realize this. Realize how insane that is. That's insanity. And, and why are people becoming suicidal? Because of that. Because of this environment. Because of the environment being surrounded with Muslim men and violent psychopath, gang bangers, bulliers, bashers, uh, trolls that wanna kill us with words, you know, if 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 they could get away with it, if they could find us and where they feel like they're not being monitored, they would kill me. They would, they would beat me to death. They would. There is so much tension in these people. They hate me. And if they didn't have the sexual lust thing going on, they would have nothing to do with me. They wouldn't even, they would not even bother to be in these chat rooms if it wasn't for the lust. So it's the lust draws them in and then comes the hatred and it's it's a it is a big bundle of lust and hatred interwoven.
and so Ted Bundy is the perfect example, Elliot Roger, you know, they hate women and they want women. I hate you and I want you. I hate you and I want you. That's that thing. It's so intense and so much tension, so convoluted. The hatred is worse than the lust, still. So, but then the lust is like such an intense thing in their bodies. So, and I'm not blaming them. I'm not even blaming them for having this tension and the, and the anger. Because it gets just, they don't know how else to funnel it. You know? They funnel it into this anger. It gets funneled into it. Because they are unconscious and not informed about themselves, about their biology, about how to handle communication with someone else. They don't even know that the other person is another living being, like themselves. They see other living beings, like I said yesterday, they see them as, as items, merchandise, as usable things, as walking biomass, as something to use, some commodity. something to to give them pleasure or work or enslavement to so that they can use or enslave it's incredibly sad infinitely sad and it's because of this environment of psychopathy in this world that the people on the other side of the canyon, the valley, the ones that go into depression, that ones, the ones that want to give up, the ones that want to throw their lives away, that's why they suffer. They suffer because of this environment. If if the environment was clear and good and if everyone was respectful towards the other person and if no one would fly off the handle, if there wasn't any hatred, this incredible hatred, this, the, the race hatred, Yes. It's the race hatred from all races, of course, all races. That's very sad. And it can be, it can be dissolved. It could be dissolved if we become conscious about things. If you stop comparing yourselves to others. If you stop this lashing out at others, trying real hard to find a fault with someone, you know, you want to find a fault, you know, like yesterday a guy comes in, seemed to be a white guy, I don't know, but seen a, a skinny white guy or whatever from the photo, and the first thing he says, uh, you seem fat overweight I said that's because I am overweight yeah so uh, how does the overweight thing tie into this discussion now what does that have to do with anything that I say about politics and the universe okay so then he says if you are that overweight how can you expect people to respect you I said I don't expect anyone to respect me I don't I can't control how whether people respect me or not and why should I control this this is beyond my control 
and I, I, I also actually, you know, I don't really care that much. Sometimes it hurts to be bullied. Yes, of course. I'm a living being. I cry about this. But it's not, I'm not going to be silenced. Okay? I'm not going to let haters or trolls or bullies silence me into submission or, uh, or retraction for my activism. I'm not going to do this. Hell no. Okay. I'm an activist and it wouldn't matter how I feel. I'm still going to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves, the animals and any innocent being. Okay. And to straighten out some facts, to give some fact check, some straighten out the records out there, you know. And if they say things about me in order to to think that they can sort of think of me as whatever they want to think of me, you know, like you are fat, or you look like a boy, or this or whatever, you know. So I set the record straight, okay. I always do. This is... I love my body, I'm a real woman, and, you know, I set the record straight. So, a real woman, also, you know, a full girly woman, straight woman, um, girly woman that still doesn't need to adhere to society, that doesn't need veneers on the fingernails or let the fingernails grow long. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need this strive to get more validation. I have short fingernails because they serve me. Okay. I, I'm an artist. I work with my hands. I also like nail polish on it. Okay. <laughs> I like spaghetti monsters, flying spaghetti monsters on my neck. I love that kind of stuff. I'm also bubbly, I'm girly, and at the same time, my brain works very well. Huh? My brain is very sharp, and I'm very educated. Yes, an educated woman, okay? Yeah, they are out there. And then uh, the men from India are telling me, you shouldn't read books. Hell yes, I read books, and I will read books for the rest of my life. And I will get informed, and I'm interested in the world, how the world works. So there's so much regression in the world still to this day, you know. When, when I was 20, I thought, my God, when we get the past the 2000, things are going to be all futuristic and, and reformed and modern and egalitarian. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Okay? That's just pockets of society that are egalitarian and futuristic. So the rest is regressed 500 or 5,000 years back in time. And they're still in the dark ages, those people. And I give you, I give you a polite reality check, a fact check. I straighten out the records for you, okay, for your well-being out there, the haters, the psychopaths, for your well-being. Because nobody is serving you by catering to you and giving into it and reinforcing Islam or, or your psychopathy. No, that doesn't make the world a better place. Okay. We have to stand up against it. Okay. I love all beings equally much. Okay. I don't discriminate. I'm just giving some information, and it hap you know I happen to be badly treated by specific people, and it's this is just a fact. Okay, I'm not making this up, and I'm not trying to make a point in a racial direction with this. 
I'm just saying this is what happened and this is what happened to many people and don't be afraid don't be afraid to become very cautious okay when you are out there don't be afraid of it just because you know someone will say what you don't trust me because of my skin color no you say I don't trust anybody anymore I want to protect myself I'm a living being and I deserve love and protection. So I learn, I go through my life, I learn, okay, I learn to read faces, I learn to read body language, I learn who is violent, I learn who is peaceful, I learn who is a crook, I learn who is honest. So gradually we learn. And trust your gut instinct on this. Don't let social peer pressure overrun your gut instinct. You have to listen to your gut instinct. Okay. If you meet a guy and he's cute and seems nice and all of this, but you, your gut instinct is already picking up on his enormous tension that he's sitting on. And he's about to fly off the handle and... and if you met him, he'd kill you. you know? So your gut instinct tells you this, okay? And if you over have been overriding your gut instinct even, then at least listen to the nightmare that comes up at night. Because the nightmare is like, hello, I'm telling you something, okay? There's danger, don't go in that direction, okay? Listen to the nightmare. Write them down. Think about it. Meditate on the nightmares. What do they want to tell you? They have something to say. Don't medicate them away. Don't put, don't patch them up. Don't shove them under the rug. Don't shove any intrusive thought or fear or negative thing under the rug. It is it's there for a reason and it's something to say to you. And when there's an entity that comes to you, and there's a lot of entities out there, some of them are by and doing by location. They're, they're venturing out of their, their live bodies to, to, to swarm you around your head like vampire mosquitoes. So, and particularly in the chat room, there are those, you know, thousands of those that are in under enormous tension and that need love they hate they hate me they want my love i hate you and i want your love that's the message i get hate your guts and i want your love elliot roger ted bundy ted bundy killed women and then banged them banged their carcasses why that's what dr todd granda already said because the carcass doesn't reject him. A carcass cannot reject anyone. A carcass has become a, an immobile material. Yeah. Just like a stuffed animal or a sex doll cannot reject you. So uh, take a sex doll, don't kill anyone. <laughs> carcass doesn't stay a carcass it doesn't stay a fresh carcass for a very long time so the sex doll is cleaner <laughs> it doesn't get you infected as long as you keep it clean so these are all very important facts that almost no one wants to talk about And I think it is extremely, infinitely important for me to talk about this. Yeah. Infinitely important. Okay, I'm going to say it again so I don't get misunderstood. White people are attracted to black people. And black people are attracted to white people. So, a dark, complected person from anywhere around the world could be in Indian... Asian or black, African or South Sea Islander, 
someone with dark complexion is gonna be attracted to a baby powder skin woman or man or man. So all right, this is a fact, right? And vice versa. Okay, my friend Gabriela from Sweden is always attracted to the darker complected men. So this is, there's no shame in it, there is no blame in it, there is no pride in it. It just is. It's a biological fact, okay? So this is good. It's all good. You know? My message to you is just listen to your gut instinct. Yeah? And don't let, oh, I cannot reject him because he is that other skin color. That comes from society that was funneled into you as in a form of collective guilt. Don't go by that. Okay. Go by, oh, can I trust him? Yeah, maybe I can. Let me get to know him first, you know. Let me meet him in public places yeah? before you invite him into your apartment or house. Before you go into his house or apartment. I hope that makes a lot of sense. So don't go, don't let anyone batter you. Don't let anyone hurt you. So there are some very violent men out there. And this is a fact. And um, some are great, but the ones that are great, those are in the minority. Those are extremely rare. The, the men that are that are trustworthy, that are father material. They're very rare. So like that Owen Cook, you know, he's one of those he's one of those sweet teddy bears, you know, lovable teddy bears that you know just fantastic to hang out with, you know. I mean there's one thing I have this attraction, but there's another thing is that my need for safety and if I can meet both, if there's someone that fits both needs, then that'd be heaven, right? So maybe that, maybe I can find this, maybe you can find it, right? But put your safety above anything else. Your animal safety first, okay? And then everything else. It's very important. The animals are the most innocent in all of this. And don't get, don't, don't bring another living being into your life when you are dating someone violent. So my message to you is get out of that relationship. That is very important. So get rid of situations where you are being abused in general whether it's relationships or whether it is uh, clubs you go to or parties or certain people or certain religions you go to because you don't want to be alone if you're being if you're being abused there in any way if you are being oppressed in, or silenced, or shut up, or or bullied in any way. Leave that society. It is better to be alone than to hang out with people that are abusive. It's better to be a complete recluse than to hang out with abusive people. So if you get rid of the abusive environment, you lift yourself, you lift, you lift off that burden that has been making you depressed and suicidal, okay? Very important also the kind of videos you watch. Don't watch horror films anymore. I know we get drawn into it, we get intrigued into it. Don't do it. Be very strict and conscious about this. Don't do it anymore. Don't eat junk food anymore. Put into your mind and body what serves you, what feeds you, what loves you. Okay. Energy healing. 
there are many people on the internet that make crystal videos, for example, healing videos and ASMR videos. Caroline and Olivia are my favorites. So there are many great ones out there that make very sweet and touching and soothing videos to give love to you, you know. And watch educational stuff. Don't watch religious type of stuff. That's all brainwash. That's all someone's opinion. That's not the truth. It's very important. If we do all of these, if we take all of these steps, then we can free ourselves from all these burdening things, from all these depressing things that are out there in the world. You can make your life better. There, there are ways to make your life, even in this mess of a world, with psychopathic people running governments and regimes and dictations and corporations. You know. Yes, it's happening. It's those people that elbow themselves in. Right? But even in this situation, we can make it better. Caring people can make it better. We need you in this world. We need you caring people in this world. Okay. Don't leave. Don't leave us behind. We need every one of you infinitely precious beings. Okay. And all beings are precious. The, the bodies of psychopaths don't want to hurt anyone. Your cells don't want to hurt anyone. 